London landmarks, some large, some small, have served as backdrops for any number of British television shows and inspired many an American producer. So what makes British TV so good? Tracy Smith takes us behind the scenes. You are a meathead. <laughs> And meet him, dead from the neck up. You may remember Norman Lear's All in the Family as an American oh, TV right classic. Oh, let me catch my breath. You never mind about your breath, you can breathe later. <laughs> but you may not know the show that inspired it. Sure, we'll watch that BBC filth and liberal party propaganda. Six years before Archie Bunker, this show, Till Death Us Do Part, was already a hit in the UK, complete with the bickering dad and son-in-law. Surprised? Don't be. Hi. For the past few decades, dozens of British TV shows, or at least the ideas for them, have crossed the Atlantic to become big hits here in the colonies. You're so plebeian, aren't you? That's a swear word. No, it's not. For instance, Steptoe and Son, a sitcom about two London junkmen, was the inspiration behind Sanford and Son. But Red Fox made it his own. I'm dying. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. <laughs> then there's The Office. Ricky Gervais helped make it big in Britain. The American version was a pretty big hit as well. No! You'll thank me later. The colors of the rainbow. And when the reality show Strictly Come Dancing waltzed away with top ratings in Great Britain, an American version, Dancing with the Stars, soon followed its lead. Next up. At first, not even host Tom Bergeron thought it would fly. Before you saw the British show, what did you think of the concept? A horrible idea. I thought it was a horrible idea. Who's, who wants to watch people do a Viennese waltz on network television? The answer is nearly everyone. The show is now in its 13th year. You disgust me. Of course, not every show on UK TV is ripe for remake, says Pulitzer Prize winning LA Times editor Mary McNamara. There are shows that, you know, are magical because of the writing or because of the team or whatever. And then there are shows that are magical because of like one or two people and you cannot recapture that. <laughs> A case in point, the 70s hit Faulty Towers, a show created by Monty Python star John Cleese, who, at 78, is still every bit as funny. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Why do you think Faulty Towers is, was, so popular both here and in the U.S.? Because it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. My God, you're ugly, aren't you? <laughs> it was also pretty rare. Your typical American network show makes 22 episodes a season. The Brits often make just six, and there are only 12 episodes of Faulty Towers, period. And no remake was ever quite as good. They tried to make it three times, yes. Three times? Three times. And? Each time I said, can I help? And each time they were quite confident that they knew exactly how to do it, and each time it was a total disaster. We have no guests for the weekend. For the record, this One network's week. version was canceled after Don't nine weeks. You always left me satisfied and smiling, so. That's what she said. <laughs> Still, when it comes to remaking British TV, it seems the hits outnumber the misses. So we have a way of taking an idea and kind of running with it. Yes, indeed. Sometimes into the ground and sometimes to great success. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happily, we're in the latter. Yeah. I'm a son of a gun. In other words, our productions might have British DNA. But they have American heart. And sometimes that can really make a show sing. Oh, yeah.